Here's something you've probably seen mentioned in several of my eBooks. These are the five basic portrait lighting patterns. Now I emphasize this topic all the time because the traditional portrait lighting patterns are the foundation of good portraiture. Whether you're shooting freestyle or very static poses, knowing these patterns, I mean really having them sort of etched in your mind will help you visually identify good lighting as you shoot. Now these lighting patterns don't just apply to studio lighting, they apply to any lighting source. Natural, strobe, hot lights, whatever. Now the five basic lighting patterns we're going to talk about are short lighting, which is good for most subjects. It's a classic and flattering lighting pattern. Broad lighting, when you want to make a narrow face look a little fuller. Rembrandt lighting, which is very classic. It's very dramatic style of lighting. Split lighting, one half of the face is in light, the other is in shadow. And butterfly lighting, which is a glamorous old Hollywood style of lighting. Now there are plenty of other lighting styles which build upon these basic forms, but everything pretty much starts with one of these patterns. And we're talking about the pattern of light and shadow created by your main light. Additional lights or reflectors are often added to the mix, building onto the look of that main light. Now here's the kind of light we're usually trying to avoid unless we're going for that so-called amateur aesthetic look. It's the straight on direct flash look. You get this look when the flash is mounted just above the camera even if the flash is mounted to a bracket placing it beside the camera, you're still going to get that flashy look. One huge problem with on-camera flash is when you shoot from a lower angle. And why? It's because your flash is coming in from the lower angle, so you're producing that ugly underlighting look. Take underlighting to an extreme and you've got monster movie lighting. Doesn't look good at all. These lighting patterns can be produced with off-camera light sources, and that's what I'm doing here. And really, this is another way of me saying that off-camera lighting doesn't necessarily mean good lighting. You have to know what you're doing with the light you're using. Now we'll swing the light out over to the 45-45 position, which is always a good place to start. And we'll demonstrate the broad lighting pattern first. As you can see, this can make a face look wider. And if you've got a subject with a narrow face, you might want to give broad lighting a try. You can add in varying degrees of fill light with any of these patterns, and that's what I'm going to be doing here. Turn the head a little, we can get the Rembrandt lighting pattern. Again, a very classic look. Notice the triangle of light here, which is one of the characteristics of this pattern. A variation on this is the loop lighting pattern, where the shadow just beneath the triangle is broken. The short lighting pattern is one of my favorites, and probably the best for most portraiture. Short light can help you narrow the face, and it's a flattering look on most people. As I move the light a little, you can see the effect of this pattern. Now we'll move the light just in front and above the subject's head to get the butterfly lighting pattern. It's an old Hollywood look and it has the characteristics of the butterfly shaped shadow under the nose. Depending on how you tweak it, this light is great for hiding certain flaws as well as accentuating things like cheekbones and the chin. The neck gets this large shadow cast on it, making the front of the face the main focus. Then there's a split lighting pattern, which is also fairly dramatic. It has its uses, but it isn't the best for standard portraiture. Now these are all examples using a direct hard light source, and most of the time you'll be using some kind of umbrella or softbox for your main light in order to cut down on the hard contrast. Here's a quick run through of the patterns using a shoot through umbrella and notice that the transitions between light and shadow are wider giving you that softer look. The reason this is happening is because the umbrella helps create a larger light source spreading the light around the subject at varying intensities. 